You know, I'm not even sure what to call these videos, but I mean, the last one did pretty good, like the deconstruction or, or my thoughts on uh, Hassan. So you know what? I'm just gonna redo it again, I guess, essentially, but differently, of course. Anywho, the definition of loathing is a feeling of intense dislike or disgust or hatred. And to self-loathe is depicted as a constant belief or feeling of worthlessness, failure, inadequacy, and incompetence. And in today's video, I'm going to depict each of those features in the recent phenomena in the YouTube culture as being the vegan teacher. But I must first and foremost say, hey yo! I'm toasted uh, ideas and here I talk about things that interest me. I like to think about things critically and have my own opinion because then I'm not a sheep to any specific person or thing. I cover topics from the left to topics from the right while also not forgetting about the topics in the middle of absolutely nowhere. Now to start this off for the uninitiated, I shall give an introduction, even though it is probably not needed. That vegan teacher is someone who seeks attention by saying the most outlandish, nonsensible statements ever. Like, she doesn't just think outside the box, but rather she thinks about what's underneath the box, finding stupid arguments for how the wood of that box was probably made with tree oil from a tree that once housed an ant. A singular ant, that is, and due to how that tree housed that ant, that oil probably has remnants of that ant, and therefore that oil is no longer vegan. Is it hyperbolic as hell? Yes, but am I wrong? Cause I would think not, unfortunately. Like, for example, she, in a video covering ABBA and Preach, which they were covering a video over soup being thrown in the face of another human, she asked about the contents of that soup. Like, who cares about what's in the damn soup? The video isn't even about the soup in and of itself. It's about an abhorrent customer throwing a hot liquid at an innocent worker bee. Like, it has nothing to do with the soup's contents, and yet somehow she's able to slip in a question on if the soup is vegan. Like, who cares? Oh, is this the soup throwing episode? Fucking video of a customer throwing soup. <gasps> what? That's violence. Oh my god. What? Why? Into a restaurant manager's face. The customer ordered a, sp a spicy menudo soup. It's a popular Mexican soup. Does it look vegan to you? It has tomato and noodles. Could be. I don't know. A lot of Mexican foods can be vegan because they eat a lot of beans and rice down there and healthy whole foods. And for those of you who are always saying, oh, only rich people can be vegan. Well, no, that's not true. A lot of the poorest countries eat whole foods like lentils and chickpeas and rice and potatoes and carrots and all of these wonderful foods that don't involve any cruelty. That is absolutely true. Uh, but also they need the animal products in most of these countries for export purposes, for agricultural purposes. So it's very common to keep some around for those purposes. Now, I don't know if using them for that purpose is considered vegan. No, it's not. Right? Because no, no, it's still exploitive. It's not vegan. To use animals to yeah. cook? Don't touch oh, wow, so. don't, don't, don't I actually don't know. I don't know. I'm, don't I'm, I'm not being you can't use. You can't even use honey. Okay. You can't? No. All right, I, I don't know anybody. So, so, so there you go. Because you're because you're taking the you're making profits off but, of what. But the, but, the but she is doing. correct. Like in in a lot of poor countries, ex access <clears throat> to meat is way more expensive than a lot of other yeah. options because meat is more expensive. It's hard. Yeah, it depends to get. where you are. In yes. Some places, meat being is, vegan, being vegan is, is more expensive. Yeah. But as for the bankrolling portion of the title, something that I have noted is how there is another phenomena on YouTube where certain YouTubers will feed into that hate that they receive because, and I might be wrong here, but it's either that they believe in the hate themselves and they agree, ergo self-loathing, or that they play into that because it pays their bills. and. Maybe I'm wrong, I'll be completely candid with that, but I still need content, and I am 
I'm pretty sure I'm still correct on this. I one second could be wrong, but that 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 can be for you to judge in the comments. Now, to continue on, she always and always goes on and on with one specific type of subject, that being veganism, because otherwise is cruelty to animals, which I would hope and pray that her car that I su suspect she has would also agree with her not being cruel to animals. But I want to take a slight turn in this and go over the evolution of things. Not, not on the whole grandeur scale of it, of course, but just on a molecular type scale with one of her re recent shorts in which she claims that vegans are better than God. Vegans are better than God. It's just a fact. Look, we have two hands, right? We can choose what to do. Three times a day, we can choose compassion or cruelty. Three times a day, we choose not to eat animals, not to steal from them. We choose to be kind. Meanwhile, God is doing fuck all, absolutely nothing. We don't know if God is drunk, stoned, asleep, watching and eating popcorn and thinking it's hilarious with all of the wars that go on, or maybe God is just dead. We don't know. But the good news is that we have two hands in which to do good in the world. So every day you can choose to be kind and compassionate instead of cruel. Look, if we had designed the planet, we would never have designed lions who eat zebras. That's just mean. They don't even want to hurt them, but they have no choice. But we have moral agency. We can choose kindness. So we choose tofu, beans, lentils, and rice, and you too can be nice. First things first, I would like to point out that if we as regular people were to have created Earth, everything would be completely and utterly fridged. Cause the mass general of people don't even understand the basics of how life and how plant cycles work. If we did not have meat eaters in to, to eat other prey, then could you tell me where those plants in that surrounding area would get nutrients like carbon, nitrogen, and phosphorus, all of which come from carcasses? Could you tell me where the plants are going to get those? So you mean to tell me that the plant lover miss that vegan teacher's first plan of action when creating Earth is to kill off plants because they wouldn't get enough proper nutrients. And then, could you tell me the plan for things like overpopulation? Do you truly think that if we got rid of carnivores that things like cruelty wouldn't occur anymore? Isn't having animals suffocate on themselves just as cruel? Or in my opinion, even more cruel? Cause instead of being taken out quickly through quote unquote humane ways, they're being taken out by being unable to breathe due to their own brethren. I, that's a shitty way to go out in my opinion. And then I also have to ask, what is your plan for like animals like pigs? Do you get rid of them too? Oh, did, you, you don't know when you think I'm crazy for saying this, saying such a thing, they're so cute. Did, did, you, did you know that mother pigs will eat their babies if they're hungry? Is it somehow not cruel for a piglet's own mother to eat it? Or do you just plan to somehow change the functionality of pigs during creation? Pigs are nature's decomposers, and if they are hungry, they will eat. Pigs are even known for eating people. So do we get rid of them as well because you want to get rid of lions for essentially doing the same thing? Though to continue on, what about elephants? They are well known for crushing people and animals likewise through their sheer weight. Did they eat that dead animal that is now a literal pancake? No, because they're herbivores. But isn't animal death the same as animal death no matter the meat being eaten or not? And last I checked, your last vision on Earth being a foot is a cruel way to go out. It's the same thing as being curb stomped, just by a much heavier set of feet. So is the plan to basically make planet Earth extinct of all life? Because with the statement of, if we designed the planet, we would never have designed lions because they eat zebras and that's just mean. We would be killing off almost every animal on planet Earth. We would even be getting rid of some plants. 
Did you know that zebras, after a dominant male wins the fight against another male, they will kill the foals that a pregnant zebra births to eliminate any trace of its pre predecessor? Zebras are even known to kill lions, go figure. They'll even kick their own kind until they die. But no, I like zebra, therefore zebra lives. Did you also know that some dominant zebra males will aggressively mate with a pregnant female in order to force that female to miscarry? But no, that's not cruel because I like zebra, right? I would also like to bring into question what her plans for the natives up in the Arctic are. Is she just going to kill them off as well because they eat meat? Even though that is quite literally the only living and eatable thing up there. Like, she calls God worse than vegans, yet her figurative world is complete anarchy. And in her world, humans would have died off a long time ago because humans are historically known for eating meat due to its energy properties. In fact, she herself wouldn't exist if her world existed. Hook, line, and sinker, cause this is where I bring back up the point of how I figured that she just self-loathes, and my thoughts on why she is so hyperbolic, I think I, I would hope that she's being hyperbolic with her ideals to at least some degree, but what do I know? Anywho, my thoughts on why she's hyperbolic or at the worst an extremist in the vegan world is because she doesn't like herself as a human due to what that means in the landscape of humanity's history with eating meat. And when she speaks hyperbolic or to the extremes, then her thoughts about herself are validated by everyone hating on her. And moreover, validated by her hating other humans who for eating meat or disagreeing with her. And what does all of that hate or controversy return to in the world of the internet? Money, fame, being heard louder than those without that fame, or in better terms, her being self-loathing of herself for being human and then her hating other humans for disagreeing with her is completely bankrolling her life. Which is kind of tragic if I cared, because she lives in a perpetual state of disgust in humans because it's that state of disgust that pays her bills and gets her through life. Like, uh, like imagine getting paid to hate yourself. That's like paying those who call the suicide hotline. It's very backwards in my mind. But I think that that's just about enough for this video on how self-loathing has gone bankrolling in the life of that vegan teacher. If you disagree with my take, then please let yourself be known down below. But if you agree, then please do no different because every voice is welcome. But while you're down there, please hit that subscribe button to become a fellow bread bag and also hit that like button so that people who may not have seen this video can see this video and so that they might join the bread box as well because once again we need more bread but before you go i hope to see you in the next video and until then have a good one